What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be looking at the Panasonic Toughbook CF31. The Panasonic Toughbook CF31 is a fully ruggedized laptop commonly used in law enforcement and military applications where the utmost reliability and durability is essential. This device uses a magnesium alloy shell with rubber bumpers around the edge to add additional shock protection as well as a shock mounted hard disk drive and um, weatherproof flaps over all ports. It is an extremely bulky and extremely heavy laptop. However, when it comes to the world of tough books, bulkiness generally means additional durability, and that is certainly the case with the CF31. It is extremely, extremely tough, as the name should suggest. This device has covers over every single port on it. These are weather sealed covers using a mixture of foam and rubber seals, as well as some sliding doors that have, um, that have their own little uh, type of rubber seal in there. <clears throat> These port covers are far superior to the CF-19 that we looked at previously. This guy here. The major difference between the two port covers is these you have to pry downwards as in you have to get your nail or something under that little lip there and pop them down. On the CF31 these are locking type connectors. They still use the same living hinge design unfortunately so that means they will eventually snap off if you bend them too many times. Um, however replacements can be gotten fairly easily on sites such as eBay. Um, these they do lock in place, so they don't require any force to open them. You just push down and then they pop out. You don't have to pry on them at all. This is a far better design than what we've seen in basically all the other Toughbook models. Now, um, the larger doors, these are a bit different in how they operate. Most of them have a sliding catch mechanism of some kind. This is where the hard drive lives. Around back, we have additional I.O and a serial port, so another lovely thing about these is they do have a physical uh, RS-232 capable serial port, and this is excellent when debugging and working on older hardware, or in some industries, they just use that. Uh, they use serial more often than others, as in like the scale industry, actually, um, which is where I spend my day job. So, <clears throat> That is actually very, very useful for me. Um, in the back here, we have a sliding cover that goes over the docking port. That cover is fairly uh, difficult to slide back and forth on this one because it hasn't been used very much. In fact, this entire laptop is in extremely good condition, almost mint for a tough book. These are frequently very heavily used and very beat up. This one has a little over 6,000 hours on it, which isn't bad for its um, age. I think this is around a 2013 to 2014 uh, model. So it's getting a little bit on in the years, but <clears throat> that's generally not really an issue for tough books, especially since they really aren't doing heavy lifting type applications. These are used for troubleshooting, debugging out in the, uh, out in the field, um, not so much rendering videos and whatnot. Although I will get onto it later, this is fully capable of doing that if you don't mind it running a little bit warm. So in the back here, underneath this cover, if we pry it down, we can now see dual USB 2 ports. Um, we do have a single USB 3 on the side, and we can add in additional ones into the express card slot in the uh, other side. Um, we have our docking connector along with connections for our antennas, so you can have external Wi-Fi or GPS antennas if it's equipped with a GPS receiver um, or cellular connections. Um, you have a VGA port, which is nice to see. You have your headset and microphone port, which are a little bit inconvenient to get to, but that's no, probably the least of our worries when it comes to machines of this nature. <clears throat> On this side here, we have our door that covers up our expansion bay. This bay here can be populated with a uh, optical drive or a um, external secondary battery pack, which I have coming. 
they are rather pricey if you want to get one new though i will mention that we also have a uh, sd card reader as well as a pcm cia slot and express card slot over here we have the flap that covers up our battery or primary battery that is we pop that down you can see it's a normal um, kind of a flat type battery it uses 18650 cells it's quite long i'm not going to take it out because the machine is in sleep um, and then directly above that we have our cooling vent yes this does have active cooling unlike the previous model cf19 that we looked at um, around front we have our power switch which is a slider switch somewhat similar to the cf19 we have our handle which unlike uh, the cf28s that i have this locks in place not really it locks but it kind of um, it pushes in and clicks into place unlike um, unlike the other ones where they just kind of flop around this is nice so when you're working on it this stays put just a gentle tug and it pops out and then pops right back in something else to note on the front here is the primary latch for the lid this keeps it securely closed however I do prefer the latch on the CF 19 a little bit better on the CF 19 it's more of a clasp design where you have to lift up from the bottom and then flip it down um, this is much less likely to come undone and in fact I have bumped this many times when I go to pull the handle out I bump that and it unlatches the lid which isn't a major problem you just have to know to pull it from the bottom instead of getting your hand on the top but I prefer the design that clasps it a little bit uh, more securely um, especially with this type of fully rugged machine where it could be knocking around quite a bit it's nice to have one that is fully um, clamped down now this does work well um, and it is a very satisfying sort of operation when it comes to the display the cf31 is considerably larger than the cf19 which makes sense because the cf19 is designed to be a more compact portable device and the cf31 is meant to be a more fully featured laptop um, <clears throat> another thing to note on the cf31 is it uses a full-sized um, keyboard that is using a very decent layout unlike the CF-19. This has arrow keys that are in the proper position. Also with the emissive backlit touchscreen you have a standard sort of chiclet uh, type key switch that feels very very nice to type on. Um, somewhat similar to an older MacBook Pro um, like a 2011 to 2013 I think model use these uh, switches or very similar switches to it. Um, I also, as uh, the name would suggest, it is a backlit keyboard, so it is very easy to see in the dark. Um, the backlight, although it is uh, very functional, is not extremely bright, so it's not annoying. It's just enough to light up the keyboard so you can see it in dark situations. Um, now, as far as the screen goes, it is very, very bright. Um, however, very low resolution. It is the same resolution as the CF-19, 1024 by 768, which for Windows 10 is a little bit on the low side. In fact, it's extremely low for Windows 10. Um, however, it does run Windows 10 quite nicely. Let's log in here. Now, you can actually probably get a bit of a screen door effect or a moray effect off of the screen in the camera and that's just due to its rather low resolution it doesn't look too bad in person um, the screen does get exceedingly bright so this is a 1200 nit display um, outdoor readable um, it does seem to be considerably brighter than my cf19 i'm not sure if i have something configured uh, strangely on the cf19 um, but yeah, it does get much, much brighter than my particular CF-19. So let's crank the brightness up. The camera is just going to auto adjust to it, but yeah, you can't really tell how extremely bright that is because it, uh, it's just adjusting its own white balance to compensate for the amount of light, but it's almost hard to look at it when it's at full brightness. Um, and that's something you just, you don't get that with any other, um, any other laptop really unless it's designed to be used in outdoor environments that is a really really nice feature that the cf31 has um, when it comes to other user interface or user uh, input devices we have our same little crummy trackpad down here as the cf19 has um, it's 
still sucks. It's a pressure sensitive touchpad. Don't like it at all, but I get it. You, they need a pressure sensitive one to use with gloves. Would have been nice if they could have made it a little bit bigger anyway, but eh, it's acceptable. And also acceptable is the touchscreen. It is a large single point resistive touchscreen. It works fairly well. Um, if you have trouble with the uh, touchscreen not being recognized properly in Windows, there's a BIOS setting um, called touchscreen mode. If you have it on touchscreen, it um, doesn't recognize it correctly in Windows. However, if you set it back to auto, um, it seems to work properly. So, um, yeah, that's a little bit of a weird thing. But, yeah, if you set it back to it's just auto state, um, I believe it'll choose tablet mode, which then works as you would expect in Windows 10. So you can actually scroll through things. Um, before, it was like trying to emulate a mouse, which was kind of weird, and it didn't actually show up as a touchscreen, so you couldn't calibrate it in Windows. But However, when you switch it over to the other mode, it then allows you to calibrate it using the built-in Windows 10 uh, touchscreen calibration utilities. So that is a huge plus. Uh, let's talk battery life on this thing. It's stock battery. Uh, from my experience, the one I have in here, it is used. Um, I get around 10 hours, 10 to 12 hours of battery life, which is really, really good. Um, these are rated for up to 28 hours of battery life with the secondary battery installed. Um, and I don't doubt it, because I'm sure the battery I have is considerably used. That being said, it works just fine. Um, I would like to install the secondary battery just to give it a little bit of a test. Um, this is also running a spinning hard drive. I think they came stock with a 500 gig hard drive. That is what mine has in it. Um, <clears throat> now, I will be upgrading that in a later video to a 500 gigabyte solid state drive. Now, the solid state drive upgrade really isn't that necessary as it runs just fine off of the hard drive. I don't really see that much of a point in upgrading it. Um, it's snappy enough. Boot times aren't super fantastic, but again, for this type of laptop, it's fine. This is meant to just be getting some work done in slightly inhospitable places. If it takes an extra couple of seconds to boot up, meh, it's all right. So, yeah, but I, I do uh, I do look forward to upgrading that. It should not be a too major of a process to do. Um, I will have to strip down the caddy, uh, remove the little heater element from it, and replace it in with the new drive. And it should just be slotting it in and reloading Windows. In fact, really the only issue with doing that is the reloading the Windows part, which I'm not really looking forward to. But yeah, this is an extremely, extremely nice machine. They are built like nothing else. They are just so, so durable, so rugged, and so nicely constructed. Um, I mean, it's really the best option out there right now for a fully rugged laptop. Um, I should mention this is a Mark IV variety with a third gen 2.7 gigahertz Core i5 and 8 gigs of RAM. Now, those specs are not exactly anything to write home about, but it is powerful enough to get the majority of your work done on it. Um, it can even do a bit of light video editing. I've loaded Adobe Premiere on here and it's able to export videos no problem. Um, actually almost as fast as my video rendering machine, which is kind of weird. It just goes down to show there's some strange optimization things going on with Premiere. Um, it seems to be able to export videos fairly equally ac across most Intel processors. I'm not sure what the deal is with that because my primary system is a 20 core, 40 thread, dual Xeon um, LGA 2011 beast of a thing and <clears throat> yeah it, it it crunches through all workloads like a monster but um, one issue I will note with really all tough books is they run really quite hot and that is mainly due to a slightly weird but understandable design choice on the part of Panasonic they chose to, instead of use thermal paste, they use a thermal pad to couple the CPU to the cooler. So those are not exactly the best thing for conducting heat away from it. Um, 
it's done really for the purpose, I at least my understanding, it's done to make it more reliable over time because thermal paste has a tendency to dry out and go a bit weird and kind of disintegrate over time where a thermal pad, since it's mostly a silicone pad, it just stays put and it's fine. So as long as you're not hitting it really, really hard with heavy workloads all the time, it should be fine, but the fan does ramp up and get a little bit annoying. Um, also, the fan is a fully sealed unit, so it's inside of like a little sealed case in there, so if water gets into the fan, it won't damage any other components on the laptop. Um, while that may sound like a good thing, it also means that it's pulling air from who knows where. <laughs> it's it's kind of recirculating air inside of that little enclosed box and it really doesn't seem to cool all that well. Now I've taken it all apart and cleaned it and stuff and that really doesn't seem to make any difference. There wasn't really any dirt to speak of in there since this seems to be a very very lightly used machine probably in a fairly clean environment possibly inside of a vehicle um, since these are commonly mounted on a dock inside of police cruisers. Um, Generally, I think they do use the CF-31s over the CF-19s. CF-19s, I think, are a little bit more favored by, like, first responders and things where they're out in the field more so, um, or, like, mechanics and things like that where they'd be using them to hook them up to vehicles to read out diagnostic data and things like that in a shop. Um, and, I mean, there's, yeah, there's reasons for that, mainly just due to the size of the two devices. It's a little easier to mount the CF-31 in a stationary location and just leave it go. So actually finding CF-31s in good condition seems to be a bit easier than finding CF-19s. Um, but yeah, about the thermals, um, there's a few things I've thought about doing to improve the uh, thermal performance. I thought about using a copper shim in place of the uh, thermal pad and a couple of graphite thermal pads which are designed for more high-end CPU cooling applications, um, like one on either side of that. Um, the only thing I can see getting in the way of that is, since the CPU cooler is mounted to the chassis and then the motherboard goes on top of it, it's going to be difficult to line that up with the CPU and not have it fall over while I'm trying to mount everything. So, um, yeah, if you guys have any thoughts on what I can do about that to improve it a little bit, please do let me know. Um, it does thermal throttle a, bit, uh, a little bit when it's under full load, so yeah, it, it does hit that like 100 degrees Celsius mark and stay there when it's under full load. Um, it still performs just fine, but if you're worried about high temperatures affecting the lifespan of the processor, it might be worth looking into doing some sort of mod like that, either replacing the thermal pads with more effective ones or doing something like a copper shim. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this was helpful to at least somebody out there. And if you guys uh, like this kind of content, please do like and subscribe to the channel. I am also active on Library, so if you would like, go ahead and follow the channel over on that app. And yeah, until next time guys, have a good one.